Hello and welcome to episode 64 of uh, Full Court Press. Uh, my name is Chris Murphy. I'm a forum sports reporter. Joel, who are you? I'm Joel Sipper. I'm a sports reporter for WDAY TV. I'm also a big believer in not texting smack talk before a game is over, but that's a topic for another day. And there was no I, there was no smack talk text. Yes, you were simply was. told to shush, which you should always be told to shush because you are the worst. Anyways, we'll say that for another day. Clay, who are you? Uh, I'm Clay Cunningham. I also work for the Forum and the West Fargo Pioneer in West Fargo, North Dakota. Hence the name West Fargo Pioneer. <laughs> just, that? Just, just trying to be thorough. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about sports because that's all we're good for for you people. Um, we're going to start with North Dakota football. Joel, uh, what do you two find to be the biggest thing that happened this week? So last Friday I was at Kindred versus Oak Grove and then Richland versus Thompson. I mean, those are a couple of sneaky games or a couple of decent rivalry games. I'll start off in Class A with uh, Grovers and Vikings. Um, there was five touchdowns in, a first, in the first quarter. And as a media person, I'm going to be a little bit selfish here, where honestly, that was a dream, a shooter's dream, especially when I have more than one game to go through. I mean, come on, media begins with me here, right? So Only for you, Joel. I, yeah. For us, it's about the stories. Uh, TV <laughs> deadlines, score early, score often. Anyways, getting past that, um, it was just an overall impressive game, at least from the start. The offense has kind of sputtered after that. I mean, there was only one touchdown the rest of the game, and there was three field goals. But kind of getting into that, I mean, Kindred really capitalized off of Oak Grove's turnovers. Um, the Grovers turned the ball over five times. Vikings quarterback Michael Hall was a dual threat monster. I mean, he rushed for 128 yards and two rushing touchdowns, including one that went over 50 yards. And then he also threw for 145 yards and a touchdown. Um, Kindred's kind of the sneaky team that I think is getting overlooked a little bit. They're 2-0 and in Region 1 play. They bounced back nicely ever since losing to Carrington 20 to nothing in the first game of the season. Region 1 is pretty crowded at the top of the standings right now. You have Milner North Sargent that's undefeated. You have Hillsborough Central Valley that's undefeated. And then you also have the Vikings that are undefeated. Um, you know, that probably isn't going to last for long, considering that these teams are going to be playing each other soon. I mean, after this week, um, Kindred plays Milner North Sargent on September 21st. And then Hillsborough Central Valley September 28th. So that's really going to be a test for Kindred to prove if they're for real or not. I mean, obviously, you have two undefeated teams in a row kind of Show me, and then also speaking of which, Milner North Sargent and Hillsborough Central Valley played this Friday. The Burles have just overall been outstanding coming off their state championship last year. And what really surprises, or not surprises me, but stands out to me about the Burles is they've only allowed one touchdown in three games this year. I mean, there's been no drop off ever since coming off that state championship game. Anybody touch them this year? Ugh, I, it's early, but I think they've really established themselves as the, the class of Class A. How many times do you think you're going to say sneaky in this podcast? Uh, not, that was it. No, uh, uh, this next one, uh, we'll Richland see. Thompson. Uh, I, uh, I think Richland's sne- uh, sneaky. Uh, <laughs> Go. All right, so I got this was my first nine-man game. Not my first nine-man game, but the first nine-man game in a while versus Richland versus Thompson, and this was a really good matchup. Um, the Tommies were at – Richland took it to Thompson. They took momentum at the end of the second half. And then in the third quarter, when they went up 35-28, to 28, but the Tommies, um, another champions, and the people that they have returning, there's just something about those guys. They have that it factor. Um, Thompson came from behind in the fourth quarter to win 40-35. to 35. One thing that really stood out to me is Richland does not run the ball. I... Lots of throwing. Uh, lots. Honestly, that is I think... That's a deadline nightmare. That, no, well, yeah, I, for you guys, I honestly, that was one of the first times in a long time for me that I went to a football game and one team, I don't think they ran the ball when I was there. I, I looked at the box score. They ran the ball nine times. Other than that, they threw it 40 times. That was, honestly, too, and that was a, a contrast in style where you look at what Thompson did. Caden Schwab, he ran the ball 56 times. For 295 yards and five touchdowns. What a workhorse. Run 56 times. That's that's nuts. Would you venture to call that a contrast in styles? I, I believe so, yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this, is, this is already well, a disaster. Right. We're just starting. Anyways, but, I mean, Thompson, crunch time, they got it done when they needed to. They scored with under four minutes left to take the lead, and they added one more with under two minutes left. Thompson is really impressive, and it was kind of a, you know, 
come at the champ and you best not miss or that kind of thing. I don't know. I no, just that was kinda, nice. Yeah, did you, that did was you just make a poster? Smooth delivery. That Anyways. Was, that was dynamite. But I'll just got to go over the box score because obviously nine-man too, that, that's high-octane offenses. Um, Cole Myers, the quarterback for Richland, 25 of 40 for 411 yards and five touchdowns. You look at what his receivers did. Trent Duffner, 12 receptions, 147 yards and two touchdowns. Gavin Ryland, four receptions, 132 yards and a touchdown. And Hunter Lentz, four receptions for 110 yards and two touchdowns. That's nuts. Um, and with this win... Nine man's the best. Uh, yeah. Thompson really kind of, I guess, seizes or gets a stranglehold of Region 1. I know they have a game in a couple weeks against Mayport CG, but Mayport CG lost to Richland. Thompson can really put themselves and kind of establish themselves and grab Region 1 early here. So I, I I'm think, sure you guys are sick and tired of hearing him. Yeah, I've been, I've been sick and tired uh, for a while of you right, talking. No, um, come on. I, I would argue, I mean, you could argue another, probably the biggest thing of the week. Uh, I think certainly Thompson being tested like that was a was a good it was a huge thing in the week but I think West Fargo Cheyenne beating West Fargo in football for the first time in school history that kind of a big deal that was a big deal for them after four straight losses four straight four yeah. straight losses 139 to 28 was the score yeah the overalls game. yeah Clay you were you, you were at that game uh, how was it well I mean I don't have any butchered Omar little quotes to throw in who's that who? that's who you quoted Oh, what? That's who you attempted to quote wire. and then botched it. Oh, all right. news here, Bay. You come at the king, you best not miss. Oh, uh, okay, we're not, yeah. doing, we're not doing impressions I, on this thing. <laughs> all right, fine. That's uh, Well, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I was there on Friday. I mean, is this one, have they made named this one the Battle of Veterans Boulevard? And if not, shouldn't they? Has someone ever no. called it that? I've never, well, never heard it. No, hold on. That. Isn't, like, Veterans Boulevard is south of 94. When you go up that, it's 9th Street. Yeah, so maybe that's why they yeah. don't call it that because okay. it's not yeah. on it. You got me. Okay, <laughs> sorry, you got, that, geography's not my strong suit. You got me. Go but anyway, um, call, but that it, be... it, it, it's all right. That's fine. Just, you know, throwing out <laughs> ideas. Anyway. Um, I mean, it could be called that. Uh, um, so basically, I know this one was televised. Some, some people might have seen it and will be aware. Uh, West Fargo absolutely should have been ahead by two touchdowns in the first half. They really? Had, uh, That's what a, it sounded, I mean, it sounded like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Cheyenne turned the ball over twice in the first half. Um, uh, West Fargo, f- four different drives got inside the 25, mm-hmm. did not score a point. One of them was a dropped touchdown pass where... Those will haunt you. Kind of, yeah. Like, on the second step, like, as he was going across the goal line, bobbled it and it came out. Sort of a Jeez. dreaded process of the catch type thing. And then um, had another touchdown, uh, Luke Lennon touchdown pass, mm-hmm. get nullified by a holding penalty. Mm-hmm. And um, afterwards, yeah, uh, Coach uh, Jake Gibson kind of joked that there was almost like an invisible barrier across the goal line for his team, which yeah. eight points in three games kind of gives that impression. Was this at least a step in the right direction for West Fargo Absol- offensively? Absolutely. Um, I, I mean, I didn't see the Bismarck game, but it sounded... Pretty rough, and yeah, I mean, they were, I mean, I know you were there for their first week game, and yeah. they, they, they it, couldn't even function on offense. No, they had a hard time moving the ball. It, from what you're describing, it kind of sounds like they're at least moving the ball now, and then obviously getting into the end zones. And what about injuries? They're having problems. Yes, with. Um, they did lose uh, McIntosh, their top uh, running back. That was early too, right? Second play of the game. Um, I, had, I, had, I, mean, I, I mean, it hurts, obviously, because he had been their most, consistent offensive weapon. I didn't really seem to hinder him. I mean, they weren't running the ball very well. Cheyenne's got a really good front. I'll talk a little bit about um Did the injury look like he's done? It was hard to really – he was on crutches at the end of the game. Okay. Um, so it's good. hard to really – yeah, it's not yeah. I, not good. I didn't exactly see what happened, but it was definitely a leg injury. But, um, um, yeah, Cheyenne, I mean, they got some breaks. I mean, made some breaks. I mean, their defense made some plays. We'll give them that, too. But, um, yeah, kind of a sloppy offense. But uh, they got a Nathan Goldaddy touchdown run uh, with uh, 23 seconds left in the first half for the first score. And then um, the big thing was um, – Wait, Joel, that's how you pronounce that? Goldaddy? Goldaddy, yeah. Oh, that's an awesome last name. But, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> right. I thought you were giving him a nickname for a second. No, I, 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 I wish. I should him Goldaddy. Yeah, no, I was that, like, that, wow. That's what the PA guy at Cheyenne called him. You think he has the nickname, him. like, if friends give him, like, gold member or something like that? I mean, that's an easy play. Friends are generally right. nice, Joel, unlike I, you. No, I'm not. Come I mean, on now. Jeez. The kids like Austin Powers? No, I, he runs like it. Okay. <laughs> I, he, he's, sure. There's times he's not stoppable. All right. 
This is um, a disaster, but... No, no stop go, saying no, no, that. Go ahead. <laughs> It'll only get worse. Uh, well, 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 now I have no confidence, but... Um, yeah, I mean, really, the big thing was the um, uh, seven-plus-minute drive by Cheyenne uh, going into the first quarter, and then in a big cross win, Tommy ha- H-O-A-N-G, I should have got the point. Pr- I have no idea. Oh, well, you're the TV person. That's not great. Yeah. Uh, well, either way, really, in a pretty fierce cross win, drilled a 27-yard field goal to really... There was a lot of football to play, but that pretty much sealed it. We were a two-possession lead, and they closed it with uh, Tommy Bright uh, safety. Tommy Bright, by the way, monster all night long, just in the run game and in the pass. Back-to-back sacks at the end, including that safety, which made him our West Fargo Cheyenne Athlete of the Week in the West Fargo Pioneer on on newsstands now. He's a junior, too, and... Yeah. Safe to say his future is bright. Yes. Wow. I, I, oh, yeah. I concur. <laughs> All right, what is this set up for next week? Which you will be at this game. I will. Number three v. number four in Class 3A, uh, Far- West Fargo Cheyenne at Fargo Davies. Now, I know you take exception to being told what to do, <laughs> but I know you saw Fargo Davies week one, I, and they didn't look sharp. I did. Uh, what do you think is the biggest reason I, for their turnaround? I, the last I'm not sure weeks? if it was they didn't look sharp or if it's just Bismarck looked really good um i i would say bismarck is really yeah D- davies yeah i mean they, they struggled the offensive line struggled uh struggled big time uh fork now their quarterback couldn't couldn't get the ball he was running for his life he couldn't get the ball to uh jaden claybo who's an ndsu commit mm-hmm. um it just wasn't good uh but i mean they seem to have turned things around and i i think yeah I think this is, what do you think, the two best teams in the East? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. I saw, too, that stat line from that game against North for fourth. No, wasn't he, like, four of five and, like, the four, like, or, hold on, he was, like, five of nine and, like, four. Of the four tur- touchdowns. And, like, yeah, four of those completions And Clayble was hurt. Clayble was out yeah. for that North game. I think, too, Ty Satter at running, or not running back, but wide receiver. I mean, He does do some running back, I think, too. Got, they move on the ball, yeah. but I think he had, like, 123 receiving yards. And yes. Like two of them were, like, two monster touchdowns. So, yep. I mean... Yeah, he's a good threat. Um, yeah, I think I think eventually, yeah, I think they just they have the weapons. I mean, they're there. It's just a matter of getting Fortnell some time, which yeah. is on the line. So, um, another one. I would say just before we move away from three A is South is kind of hanging in there, and I mean, they haven't had their tough test yet as far as playing teams in the East, but I mean, they're knocking right on the door. Bless FOMO. There was a couple of great touchdown passes, touchdown catches that he had. I think he had three touchdown catches. And then also, I believe John Farr re- leads the EDC in interceptions with five so far this season. Also, Bless FOMO, great name. But, yeah. Well, wonderful name, but go <laughs> ahead, sorry. But anyway, I just think I wouldn't, as much as we know that Cheyenne and Davies are two of the top teams in the EDC, I wouldn't overlook South just yet. They have a big play capability, and we'll see what I happens. I agree. I think the East is up in the air a little bit. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's as obvious. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it can compete with the West, though. No, overall, <laughs> like I just I don't I don't know about that one. I wouldn't say complete. I would say obviously you have your top notch in Bismarck High and Bismarck Century, but might not. Yeah, I mean Davies went on the road, beatable, beat them decently. Yeah. Um, I wasn't impressed with my not in week one. Granted, yeah. nobody could grip the football because it was yeah. basically yeah. monsoon conditions on that field. But yeah, they they didn't wow me. But as far as like tears and like. The state, if we're going to do that, I would say, obviously, it's the Demons and Patriots, and then there's kind of everyone else. Yeah, there's kind so. of a cluster. All right. Uh, the other big game coming up this week is uh, Central Cass and uh, Fargo Shanley. That's uh, two Shanley versus three Central Cass. Joel, what do you got? Um, this is going to be a real prove-me moment for Central Cass, even though they've already beat, I believe it was the third-ranked team at the time in Devil's Lake. That was 39-19, to 19, yeah. if I remember correctly. And then they go on the road and beat a very good Jamestown team. So as much as they've kind of had, you know, they've been tested, this is really that test to see if they're for real or not. Because obviously we've known in Class 2A, the top teams are St. Mary's, Mary's and Shanley. So if Central Cast is able to beat Shanley. This is a huge step for them. And, I mean, Jonah Leeds has really established himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the state, I think, in my eyes, for the scores. No, I agree. I agree. We'll see what he can do against Shanley's defense. Uh, something to note, uh, in the uh, Wofford City game, which Shanley just rolled, 
Uh, Cade Busick came out early with a shoulder injury. Uh, that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, but he seemed to be all right. I think they just took him out because there's, yeah. there's no reason to get anybody hurt. They were winning up early. It was over pretty quick. And if you look at those two quarterbacks in Caden Kuhneman and Cade Busick, I think like the kind of the styles like Busick's kind of got a little bit of an edge to him. Where he's a little bit more a harder runner. Like he's a kid even for his size, he he's under six feet, but he looks for contact too. He's not afraid to lower that shoulder. So that's interesting. How much that's going to play a factor? Yeah, we'll see. Um, anything else from North Dakota before we move on to Minnesota? Yeah, that's it for me. All right, uh, Minnesota. Uh, Joel, I don't know about you, but I think uh, the craziest game of the week uh, had to be Perham versus Detroit Lakes. There were 37 points scored before either team punted. It was 30-28 at the end of the first half. But things kind of settled down for a 36-30 Detroit Lakes win. Uh, I feel I feel this is a good game for both teams. Uh, Perham would love to have this one, obviously, but you know they're still playing a Class 4A team, and they're a Class 3A team, yeah. and they stuck they stuck right with them. And then DL... And the way that Detroit Lakes has kind of established themselves this year, I mean, that win against Ricori is huge, and I mean, the, the momentum that that has to have for them. So for Perham to hang with them, too, that, that's pretty good for that's the Yellow Jackets. Good for Perham, and then good for DL, because yeah. you got to have this one, because you got to beat a good 3A team if you want to compete yeah. in 4A. Uh, just to go through some of the ridiculous numbers, Perham's Jensen Beachy threw for 456 yards and three touchdowns. He completed 36 of 59 passes. The, <laughs> the yard, I know, right? The yards is tied for 11th, uh, and completions is tied for 5th. No, no, completions is fifth on its own in Minnesota high school history if the record books are correct, which they never are in high school sports. Um, and if any person on Twitter is wondering, Beachy's QB efficiency rating over the first two games of the season is over 168. Yes, he threw two interceptions against DL, and yes, Perm lost, but it is absolutely ridiculous to have a kid throw 456 yards. 60 times nearly. And 60 times, yes. Almost, like, honestly. NFL college. Have you ever seen something like that? 60 times, maybe. Mike Leach. Big 12 kind of stuff. But well, the, well, the crazy thing, too, is Zach Peterson on Perham ran for 215 yards and two touchdowns on 11 carries. So to go through this, <laughs> Perham, Perham broke school yeah. records for most passes attempted. That wasn't broken since yeah. 1975. They broke the rec- school record for most passes completed, most passing yards, most total offense, and, and individual team records, most passes attempted. Uh, most passes completed, most passes caught, yeah. most yards receiving, total offensive play, and total offense gained. Uh, and they still lost, uh, but they broke all those team records, and it was it was insane. Um, I would love to sit in whenever those two teams do film, and they break down defensively. I would love to kind of just sit in, be flying the wall, and see what those coaches are saying. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, don't do insane. that. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, that's not the sh- a shining example of. A, a good defensive game, but I... I <laughs> well, I mean, DL, DL shut them out in the second half. It's, yeah. it's just insane yeah. what can happen in high school sports. You yeah. go from 30-28 halftime to a 36-30 final. It's yeah. just like what happened in the second half. But um, Joel, DL gets a lot of flack for their schedule, and they really can't control that yeah, because of the district. districts, which they appreciate. District, I, which there's nothing they can do. I'm, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of because I remember when I played football in Minnesota, it was conferences, and you were a little bit more freer for your schedule right. to play, you know, if you wanted to challenge yourself with this, you're kind of There's not much they can do. Your, strap your district. I mean, and, and here's the thing. They, this is what they have for the rest of the year. They have 0-2 Fergus Falls, who is 4A. They're, D, DL is 4A, so they have 0-2 Fergus Falls, who is 4A. We're going to be in Lakes Country on Friday for that, too. Yes, First you are. time ever that we're going to be in uh, Fergus Falls for that, so that should be exciting. But anyways, go on. Anyway, nice shameless plug. Ah, roll Park, out the red carpet. The, they're playing Park Rapids, who's 3A. Who's actually, Park Rapids is 2-0, and by the way, but we'll get to that yeah. later. Pequot Lakes is 3-A, and the 3A. DG, uh, DGF is 3A. East Grand Forks is 3A. Thief River Falls is 3A. The only section teams DL will play is Fergus Falls and Ricori, who are currently a combined 0-4. That just kills them for the section tournament. I mean, they yeah. don't get to play their section because of. I know it's it's. It'd be nice if you could throw in a Wilmer there too, because that's obviously a team that always contends with Ricori for a section right. championship. And this is where yeah, this is where districts kind of handcuff you. And I think too, that's a little bit easier on the travel schedule because Thief River Falls to Detroit Lakes. That's not. I mean, that's not the closest game in the world. Yeah, right. You got to go. Yeah, that's a hike. Uh, so. I don't know. I mean, th- that's why. Uh, I first of all, I don't see DL losing the rest of the season. I mean, I think Pequot Lakes might be able to give them a fight, uh, but I don't see DL losing the rest of the season. Uh, and then I will say, we don't know if the record books uh, for history are right, but uh, I will say you better believe those stats for Perm are right because my guy Ron Burns 
uh, kept them for Purim. He has been keeping stats for Purim since 1977 when he was a sophomore in high school at Purim. Hey, how about that? And, yes, stats make the world go around, and sending them to media is incredible. So it's amazing how some of the smaller schools have stats and send, while the bigger schools with 16 coaches can't seem to do that. I won't name names, but that's huge. I love stat guys, so I'm just going to throw that out there. I think, too, it's kind of, well, at the same time, like those 16 coaches, like I'm on the sidelines, and I – it's at the point where everyone has an iPad now, and there's always. It's just a matter of getting them out. It's un, It's incredible to me the size of the small schools that can click send to us immediately after a game. It's. I'm not saying bend over backwards we for us. We appreciate that. We appreciate. It. We love it, and it just would be nice. And like, and like, what I'm saying is, we we couldn't talk about this Perm DL game as much as we can without a person like Ron Burns to give us all these crazy stats. So mm-hmm. that's. I mean, we just need him. I mean, it's just that's what it comes down to. We need him for better coverage. We need him so that we know who's good. And guys like him are just awesome for us. And you, me- you mentioned Park Rapids, so... Back. I'm back to Park Rapids. Yeah, uh, Um. you meant... I was at the scrimmage, I've said this before, but between Holly, Perham, Barnesville, and Park Rapids, Park Rapids, even though they're a little bit out of sight of our viewing area, they really, I guess, stood out to me. I mean... I think they've traditionally been a scrappy team, and they've been loud. Like well, you, you'll hear them; they're hooting and hollering after a hit or any single play. But they, in that scrimmage, I mean, they held their own against some of the best uh, against Perm, who's obviously a contender in that section. And then too, Holly and Barnesville, who are really good at running the ball. There were times too that you know the Nuggets or the Trojans couldn't run the ball against them. Parker Rapids is two and zero, and they're outscoring their opponents eighty to nothing in the two games. So it's a good start for them. I mean, they they certainly have some tests coming up, but. Got to get back before we go through uh, the 2-0 and o teams. Uh, Minom and Wobbin, of course, is the other team. I feel like, I don't know about you, Joel, I feel Perham and Minom and Wobbin are the two area teams that could win state championships. Um, I think he well, could. Hey, you said Minom and Wobbin and who? Perham. You don't think Perham can win 3A? No, I can believe they can win 3A. Uh, as far as state champions, I it's a little early Well, no, 3 me. They eight three. I, I mean, 3 Triple A. I mean, Class 3A. I, the section championship isn't out of reach. I know, obviously, when you have a three-year quarterback, a three-year starting quarterback in Jensen Beachy, that obviously helps. I wouldn't put it's it It's a lot out, to ask. I'm, it, I wouldn't say it's preposterous, but it's certainly, they're capable. I just don't know if I'm, I'm not ready to say that yet. I haven't, Wobbin, I haven't seen Prom either, too. So oh, that's... I but Manoam and Wobbin, you're on board? Yeah. I The thing with Manoam and Wobbin, I don't see him getting tested until section championship. Which is kind of... You think they'll even be tested in the section championship? There's that, too. Like I just... When, I don't know how you keep yourself fresh. Or how do you... I mean... You keep yourself you had, healthy. You had, you had your two biggest tests and you, in the first two games. I know, of the week absolutely. And you pass them with flying colors. Yeah. That, I was just going to get into that. Minoman Wobbin is 3-0 with the 42-14 uh, win over Walker, Walker Hackensack. Eckley, uh, I really... I really thought the Thunderbird, Thunderbirds, like we just said, would lose one of those first two games against Ada Borup and Holly. They won 30-14 to and 28-7. to Parker Severson has rushed for 372 yards and three touchdowns on 42 carries. And John Starkey has rushed for 481 yards and seven touchdowns on 70 carries in three games. That combined, they are averaging 7.6 yards a carry. They're just unstoppable right now. That line is really good, too. Yeah, it's, and for how young they are, that line is incredible. Yeah, it's 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 incredible. I mean, they're going to be right back there in basketball, too. Uh, they're Anyway, other teams, Ottertail Central is 2-0. They have 2-0 Pillager this week. Wheaton Herman Norcross is 2-0. Breckenridge is 2-0. Norman County East Eulen Hitterdahl is 2-0. Polk County West is 2-0. Like we said, Park Rapids is 2-0, and they've outscored opponents 80 to nothing in two games. Fertile Beltrami is 2-0, and they have 2-1 Ada Borup this week. And Underwood is also 2-0, and they're mm-hmm. beating teams 94-6 to in the two games. Do you think it's possible we could see an Ada Borup, Norman County West, Minoman Wabin State Championship? I mean, this is obviously a little early and speculating. This is media. We're free to do this. Coaches First of all, shy away there's from no it. more Norman County West anymore. Or it's Ada Borup. It's just Ada Borup. It's Ada, it's Ada Borup. They gonna, have it listed as Ada Borup, I was going to ask you this. West I was going to ask you this. On the we'll, MSHL we'll, site. We'll, 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 Never trust the Minnesota State I, High School uh, League site. If we were trusting that, then we wouldn't we wouldn't get anywhere. But mm-hmm. Ada Bor like Norman County West closed down. I was going to ask you this actually. Norman County West closed down. Um, so Norman County West doesn't exist as a high school anymore. I but I think they're still going to try to I carry think that call, on. I think they're called Ada Borup West. I sent an email to the AD today. I'm waiting to hear back on what to call them, which I didn't know that's what we're supposed to call them. But somebody, if you're listening to this. 
one of the ten people who are listening to this, if you can tell me what to call Ada Borup and where to put the hyphens. I know yeah. it's Ada hyphen <laughs> Borup, but is there a hyphen West or is it just a space? If it's West? a slash, I. We don't ever do slashes. That's our style. All right. So anyway, but yeah, that's what I think they're called. But it's definitely it's definitely not Norman County West. So anyway, but yes, I think we absolutely could wow. see that. You learn something new every day. How I know. About that? This, this is what we do. But yeah, I absolutely think we could see that. Is, wait, did you look at like the section? Did you look at like what because sections are playing each the other? The Lobin is section eight. And yeah. It, or I think I messed that up. I think no, they're eight. Eight, eight, eight or six. Uh, oh God! Well, it's eight and six. This is only our job, I, but. God. Um, no, who, you're right. It preps for it, this, it, right? It's definitely eight and six. It's definitely eight and six. And I thought, like, those are two teams on the opposite side of the bracket. Is that what I, it is? I, I, I haven't looked at the bracket, so I don't know. But if it is, if if they are on the opposite side of the bracket, I absolutely think that's that another they thing too. Like Minnesota, rank has their one through four ranking for every sport besides football. Why can't they do it for football? I agree. Another I, thing. Another thing. Why? Yeah, I, I don't. I disagree with how they do that too. It's. I don't know why that is. I don't know why they have to pre-do this. Like pre, have the schedule yeah. set for the state tournament. It's anyway. Um, How many enemies do you guys make with all these these vicious call outs? Well, I told you, no, I, no, nobody listens. Ups. Trust no. me, it's more on Murphy when he calls out shot clocks, which you'll enjoy that when it comes to that time. You will not enjoy that because neither do I. The team holds the ball for two minutes and Murphy buries his head his, in his computer and. Hey, at buries, least I, I keep my thoughts to I, myself. <laughs> I, I die inside. It's, it's a snarky tweet. It's not basketball. <laughs> it's not basketball. But anyway, that is for a later date. Um, anyway, uh, what else do we got, Joel? Are we are we doing? So this? actually, I'll I'll be a, a Nietzsche or what's the what's the, the YouTube one with the Nietzsche walk Nietzsche walk guy? Where how neat is that kind of thing? Was Joel? What are these? References? Last Friday got me thinking because the weather was absolute gorgeous, like a perfect. It was amazing. Fall Friday for football, and like there was zero clouds. Obviously, the sunset was amazing, and that got me thinking. The most picturesque football fields that you've been to. Now, when I say this, for all the viewer, for all the listeners out there, this is picturesque. We're not ranking them on how much we like them. This is picturesque. You're talking about the area here coverage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, it looks like you got a list. So I'll start off with Winemere. Um, the grain elevators are literally like that was the right fir- next that to the That was the first field. one I thought of when you brought this up was Winemere. Yeah, and another and, one that's kind of like that is Richland, too. And that was, I mean, that was one of the stops that I was at. Um, obviously, this is a podcast. We can't show you pictures for this, but I was sort of just taken away by the sunset. And you had the grain elevators right there. I mean, that did, was kind of a... Did you feel feelings? I, I felt feelings. Oh, that's, that's But adorable. that was kind of like a small town America kind of feel like. This is America. There's a lot of, of America. There's definitely a lot of America. I, I, I had the same, I had the same and thoughts. And also, two kindred, I mean, not only that, they have the grain elevators. They're a little bit off in the distance, but you have all those John Deere tractors right as you come in off the highway that are, like, literally right next to the field that were kind of a cool, like, this is kind of a North Dakota moment. I'm um, looking in Minnesota, I think anywhere you go in Lake Country this time of year, too. Um, whether it's Fergus, I mean, Detroit Lakes sticks out to me on Moberg Field when there's no clouds or anything like that. You get that red sky. And then also Underwood, which is kind of cool, where they have, not only that, you're in Lakes Country, but you have that rocket that's right by the field. Yeah, I, I was saying it's funny because, you know, being a city boy, I was so not used to these open fields with views until I moved from Chicago. And uh, you want to see... Can you say Chicago again for me one more time? Chicago. Yeah? Yes. I, 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 there's a little bit of an accent there. Sure. Uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you honestly just can't beat it. Uh, don't get me wrong. In the winter, we say this now, but in the winter, those wide open fields are freezing, uh, and they want to your your eyes burn out. But for now, it's beautiful. Yeah. And there's been so many times where I've tried to capture stuff with my phone, especially Winemere. Winemere, I seem to go out early in the season before weather tells us we can't. Uh, and just no picture does it justice. You in the thing you forgot to mention, the pickup trucks being right up on the field. Oh yeah, it's yeah. just it's just like it's total America. It's just yeah, with the grain elevators, the pickup trucks right on the field, and then football. So Winemere for sure was the first one I thought. Glendon, Glendon, I feel has a great view for DGF games with the with the grain elevators. No, Joel. Yeah, 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 Glenn, yeah I think yeah, Glendon has a really good view. I was there last week and I thought the same thing. Like, yeah. wow, this. Beautiful view. And then Moorhead, I think, has some of the best sunsets I've ever seen when you're at a Moorhead football game. Fergus Falls has a cool setup yeah. where you're kind of walking down into the field. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I agree with Underwood, Richland, Kindred, uh, for sure. I, I think Breckenridge. Breckenridge has got a cool when you're surrounded by the trees. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, yeah, no, there's, I mean, there's, there's some. Any listeners, if, uh, if you feel we missed the school, be sure to tweet us a pic or something like that. Let us know. Or email your hate to jsipper at 
WDAY.com. There we sure. go. <laughs> there we go. All right. We're done with football. Uh, other sports. Let's talk about other sports. Volleyball. Who wants to talk about volleyball? I'll talk about volleyball. All right. If only to confirm that I'm still in the studio. Go ahead. That you guys are. This is not a studio. It's now a Now that you guys are creating <laughs> segments <laughs> deliberately excluding me yes. since I've only been to Welcome two back. stadiums. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, well, we teased this a little bit last yeah. week about a potential uh, Davies v. West Fargo Cheyenne battle for the top spot in the EDC. Well, it has come to fruition. Da, da, da. As, uh, both, they will meet uh, tomorrow, Thursday, September 13th? Is that the... Yeah. We have to be as specific as yeah. possible because we don't know when people are listening. They might pop on this a year from now. Then we'll, <laughs> we got to paint a, a picture. They when will, we are long fired. <laughs> well, well, we'll see. That That is my track record of employment, yes. But um, uh, they will meet uh, at Cheyenne. Uh, both teams are 5-0 and in the EDC. Davies still unbeaten overall, 11-0. and uh, They've been impressive. Yeah, that, I haven't seen them in person, but 11 and 0 is impressive. I, yeah. I, I can confirm. Uh, Cheyenne eight and four overall. Maybe played a, a little bit of a tougher schedule. I don't. I don't know how how it all ranks out. I've I've not seen a lot of volleyball I, yet. It's still early in the season for me. I haven't been out to a lot of volleyball this year. I've I've seen West Fargo Cheyenne quite a bit, but I I still haven't seen Davies yet. So. We'll... I'm sure Thursday that'll change. One thing, I guess, to look at was six common opponents. That's mm-hmm. maybe a fair thing. Davies, naturally, undefeated in those <laughs> games. 6-0. and oh. Cheyenne is 5-1. and one. Uh, Their one loss was a 2-1 defeat to a Bismarck legacy team that Davies defeated 2-1-1. One, one. So that's mm-hmm. even, I mean, that's obviously invitational play. I, yeah. It's, you know, maybe hard to gauge. But you, I know you love making predictions. Yeah, so, I'm going to shy away from that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Poor, poor Joel. Please? I tell you what, you've been here for a little... Make an impression. This is your time to shine. I mean, I've already okay. put my foot in my mouth tons of times. Well... You, this is your time, Clay. Again, Again, I've not been out to volleyball yet. This will be my first time, so I'm just basing on this. But, you know, I'm going to go ahead and make some enemies on my beat. I'm going to take Davies in a 3-2 to two slobber knocker. Barn burner? Absolutely. Burn all the barns to the ground, this volleyball (laughs) matchup will do. But, um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward. I think it should be an intriguing game. And um, still a lot of volleyball to play afterwards. This doesn't, like, absolutely solidify the EDC champion. But someone will have the upper hand. So I see we got cross country. First, first I wanted to throw in that uh, on the Minnesota side of things, Ada Borup uh, is, is the only ranked, just became the only ranked volleyball team. In the area, they're at number 10 in Class A. I also just got a response from Ada Borup Athletic Director Kelly Anderson Ooh. said that since Norman County West no longer has a high school, the Minnesota State High School League recognizes us as Ada Borup since there is no longer a co-op. So that's what the high school does. However, locally we are calling our teams Ada Borup no hyphen West since we do, so Ada Borup hyphen and then West. Okay. Since we do have several students that came over in tuition agreement this fall from Norman County West, then she said clear as mud, question mark. And so there you go. So they, they're locally, they're calling them that, but I guess a, the high school league recognizes them as Ada Borup. There you go. So huh. now we can move on it's to cross country. It's great to get that resolved on the air, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, like, Kelly, like, Kelly, Kelly, Anderson, Kelly Anderson's okay. wonderful. She gets back to me very quickly. She is very good over at AD. You're like our Adam Her Schefter. AD. Just right in the middle, right in the middle of this, break except, out the phone, except, send out a couple texts, except, and bam. Except my information is useless. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, cross country. Yeah, you know, I feel like I'm almost maybe going to be getting a reputation as the cross country guy, as I've had cross country information sure. for all three podcasts. If but you yeah, want to be. Something to uh, really note, uh, West Fargo Cheyenne, uh, the boys team, uh, prior to August 30th of this year, no wins, no team wins, no individual wins. And, I mean, still a relatively new program, but um, uh, oh. that, that streak came to an end um, at the Hatton Northwood Laramore Invitational, where uh, sophomore Jacob Canodal, I have that, re- I did get that pronunciation down, so one for two. Um, yeah, he took first place, and the team took first place. And you're, you're probably thinking, oh, that's a nice story, but I suspect, yeah, it's probably over. No, you should have read further ahead <laughs> I thought in our script here, Joel, because <laughs> they turned right around and won at the West Fargo Invitational on Saturday with, with Canodal again taking first place. Mm-hmm. And that was, uh, I mean, uh, noteworthy because uh, that race uh, featured Class A third-ranked Grand, Grand Forks Red River, mm-hmm. who they edged for the top spot. So, I mean, this is a team uh, one. F- 
one top five finish in the EDC, never better than 13th at state. Look like, um, I mean, look, so look ready change. to look ready to make, uh, yeah, significant leaps. And uh, should also throw out the West Fargo girls, uh, number three uh, in Class A, had another strong showing at the West Fargo Invitational, won uh, rather easily behind a uh, second face second place finish from Hope Pringle, the West Fargo Pioneer, West Fargo High School Athlete of the Week. All right, on newsstands now, and. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a strong showing. And then uh, turn around, finish second to top-ranked Davies at Andrew Nelson on Tuesday. Worth noting, uh, Davies uh, won with 19 points. West Fargo was at 67. So um, Davies had, Davies had is, uh, Megan Lundstrom win the whole thing, yeah. too. And then North, Alex Lewis won. Alex Lewis had, Nor yeah, Nor or Fargo North had Alex Lewis win it, uh, win it for the boys. Hmm. So, Which yeah. I think you guys had something on him. Yeah, trying Taylor to Mankel the, did a story on him. I mean, I've trying to be the first individual champ since 1970. Yeah. So, yeah, there we go. That's all sports. I think, Joel, you wanted to talk about a story that you're working on on Wapaton's uh, Jacob Peterman? I, yeah, I suppose that's going to air tonight at 10. So, basically, Murphy... Tonight being Wednesday. Wednesday at 10, yeah. um, for context. Um, just basically, Murphy, I know you've covered him throughout his whole saga, too. Um, it's getting closer to the end for Jacob Peterman where he might beat cancer here. Oh, God, um, the way you started that sentence. No, I thought no, no, was no, like, no, 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 uh, no. That was word poorly delivered. So it's not... Anyway, so just to give some context for those who don't know about him, um, it was January 12th was supposed to be his first ever varsity game. Um, his coaches weren't going to tell him that he was going to play until after warm-ups. And literally the first warm-up, his first layup in warm-ups, like they came out of the locker room, went running in, and he landed awkwardly on his left leg and broke his femur. And so it just, then, like, shattered. It was in a way that what, they were just like, how did that happen? What he told me was, um, it was, part of it was pointing left, part of it was pointing right. I mean, as gruesome as you can get without the bone going through the skin. Um, so they rushed him, so they brought him to the hospital in Devil's Lake, did some x-rays. Sure enough, they say, all right, this kid's got a broken femur. Don't forget, on the way to Devil's Lake, didn't the, the ambulance the broke, broke down, down and, and it was, like, negative 30? It, yeah, it's like peak North Dakota winter where it's, like, it's as cold as you can get. And actually, the Wapiton bus went past them from it's, as they were transporting him from Devil's Lake to Grand Forks. Literally, the Wapiton boys basketball bus went beside him. Well, anyways, when he got to Grand Forks, the doctors noticed that there was there was more than a break. There was a cancerous tumor in his leg, so that kind of started his whole journey. I mean, he had to he went through chemo and was bedridden for three months because the hope at first was they'll do the chemo. And then they'll, when he was bedridden, they had to have it so the two bones were apart. Yeah, they, had, they had to keep the leg broken, yeah. basically. So he's bedridden and he had chemo through all this. Well, anyways, March 29th, he had the biggest swing of emotions that downright you can ever have, where the doctors came in and told him that the cancer had been contained to his leg, just his leg. So there was no other cancer in his body besides in his left leg. And then after that, March 30th, they told him, we have to take the leg. Like, and the way that the doctor worded it to him, there was two options. Obviously, there's a surgery that they could try to remove the tumor in, but there were so many things that could go wrong where amputating the leg was the best option. It was 65%. It was, um, there's, there's a 65% chance that the cancer would be gone if they kept the leg, but there was yeah. a 90% chance if they, amputated, if they it. amputated it, and so the, the family decided, like, yeah. Yeah. To go with that. And so for the past couple months, I mean, he's been doing chemo. And then even that, I mean, it, it didn't get any easier for this kid. I'm One of the things when I talked to him was the nerve pain in his left leg. Um, it took him a while to get used to. And without painkillers right away, it was unbearable. Like, he would say it was almost like he got shocked constantly in his leg when his nerve, when those nerves acted up. And then also, one thing with chemo is it will wipe out a lot of your immune system and some of the antibodies that you built up. Um, his dad, Tim, had shingles. Well, anyways, Jacob had chicken pox. He got chicken pox from that, so he had to battle all that too, but um, it wasn't long ago that he actually returned to school. So that was kind of an amazing thing for him was 
you know, through all that, there's a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel where he's starting to gain some normalcy back in his life. Can you just imagine that, like, going from warming up for a basketball game to being in the hospital in Minneapolis, like, three and a half, four, almost four hours away? Yeah. That you have cancer in your leg that's broken, that you were going to be in... You're going to be bedridden for three months, yeah. and you have cancer. And, yeah, he went from being yeah. a sophomore. He had just scored, I think, in a JV game, 19 points. They were super excited about him. They, he yeah. was doing everything on both sides of the court. They were about to let him start his first varsity or play his first varsity game. I mean, he has good size, too. He's a kid that's only yeah. six, three, six feet, three inches tall. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, boom. And then you go from B cancer. To, it's just yeah. it's incredible. It's incredible um, what humans go through and what they're able the to thing, get over. Through all that he went through, one of the things that stuck out to me is he's a junior this year. He did all his homework in the hospital while he's going through chemo. Did he really? So for someone to, I mean, it, it's easy to say, "Hey, I'm going to concentrate on cancer," and, and nobody would blame you for it. No, absolutely not. And he did his homework in his hospital, in his hospital room. To, to pass some time by whenever he didn't have visitors, which was rare. I mean, um, his mom told me he had one of the most popular hospital rooms in the University of Minnesota. I think it's University of Minnesota Children's Hospital. But And then kind of give an update on it. I mean, he had one of his last, his last chemo treatment. Um, they don't have a bell in that hospital. And you, you see a lot of the times on, like, sports center specials or just even the hospital, there's a, ring the bell, yeah. there's a bell that you ring after your last chemo treatment. For whatever reason, they didn't have one. When he got done with it, his mom said, you know what, Arby's has one. Let's go to Arby's and do it. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Let's and go to Arby's. <laughs> when I asked him about it, too, he he's like, you know, we, we got our meal, we ate, and then sure enough, he's like, I went over there and I rang the crap out of the bell. I didn't I didn't care if people looked at me, looked at me weird, like, that was a moment just for me to kind of signal that, you know, I'm making strides in this. And sure enough, like, what from what his mom and what he told me, everyone kind of pieced the puzzle right away. But initially, you got to look like, what is this kid Th- doing? This is why you don't judge people, because yeah. you have no idea. Like, he probably looked like a weirdo ringing the bell, but instead, you know, he's a guy who just, you know, got done with chemotherapy. Yeah. Like, that's that's incredible. Yeah. The Arby's, that's incredible. <laughs> Um, he returned to school recently, and what stood out, too, was he was only supposed to do half days. He only did a half day one day and then fully back to school. His mom picks him up at 3.30, which is incredible. Um, as far as updating his situation, he is not 100% through this yet, but he's getting there. Um, when he got chicken pox, and they do CT scans every single time that he goes in, well, they noticed he picked up three nodules, nodules or nodules, um, Sure. I, I'm not sure. Um, it's one of the two as far as pronunciations on that, which the doctors didn't know it was cancer, so they were kind of waiting to see as he went through chemo if they would go away. Um, he had his big checkup on Monday to see if he was fully through this. Those nodules are still there. So the next plan of action for Jacob is um, he's going to have surgery down the road here. Um, they kind of have to space it out because I believe one is on one lug and there's, there's two on his other lung, so they'll kind of space those surgeries out where um, he's still got another month or two to see if he's he's fully beat this, but what an incredible story. I, I just wanted to kind of end with uh, um, one side part to it, which kind of jumped out at me uh, when I did the second story, the update on it. Um, after he got his leg amputated, um, his mom, Connie, uh, went, into the, uh, went into the room, and he was just weeping. Yeah. And, and she, she, had been, she had been warned... That you know, um, that when you know someone sees their leg amputated, they just you yeah. know they're gonna be very emotional. Like you just you've seen a leg your entire life, and then it's not mm-hmm. there. Um, she didn't know what to do. Like there was this was the fifth surgery since you know the cancerous tumor was in there, and he had never had a reaction like this. But he was just weeping for forty minutes. She said he yeah. left, and she asked him if he was sad, he was upset, uh, if he was in pain, or if he just couldn't look at the leg. And he said, "No, mom, I'm crying because I get to live." And that's what he said. That's all he thought about after that, which I thought was just, yeah, when I heard that story, it's just like, if that doesn't make you feel stuff, then I don't think you're a human. His, res- so. his resilience in all of this, too. It's insane. Um, his it's, demeanor, it's, what his mom was telling me, I mean, as much as being in a hospital, he would always have a smile on his face. And some of the pictures that they took, I believe is, they, post, they posted on uh, the Wapiton Boys Basketball um, Facebook, which is run by the head coach, obviously, Jeff Ralph. I mean, you... You'll go through that, and you'll just think to yourself, "How how is he maintaining this attitude through all this?" 
Humans are insane. I don't know how people do what they do. <laughs> I, it, it's, yeah, I mean, it's just something that really sticks out to you. And then also, um, one of the cool parts of the story is his cat Mirabella made a, a trip down. Is she... Is she? Oh yeah, she made a trip down to Minneapolis. Yep. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah I. Yeah. I'd seen and that he was. He was really missing Mirabella. There's that too, and it's another thing like how instinctive animals are, and how much they really feed off of humans' emotions and pick up on a situation right away. His mom told me as soon as she brought brought the cat in, like she literally jumped up, curled right up next to Jacob, and which is crazy too, because cats in a different like if you bring cats into a different atmosphere, they freak out. Yeah. So it's crazy no, that she's she was saying able... that she was really calming, like she literally cut up. Cuddled up right next to Jacob, which... Did Mirabella get on WDAY? I, I shot video of Mirabella. I have pictures of her, so she might make an appearance. That's good. She deserves a TV, TV appearance. <laughs> all right. That's all I got for today. Do you guys got anything else? That's it. Okay. Thank you for listening. Uh, we'll try and be better next time.